we'll start up our file manager, which we saw in an earlier uh, presentation. And this is the file that I was working on. It looks like a piece of paper there. And I can see a preview of the file that I was working on. So this is your kind of file cabinet view. We, we watched where we saved it. And uh, there it is there. So I'm going to open it up again. So the saving is what you do when you're done for the end of the day and you want to come back a day or two later and continue working on it. The other thing I should mention about saving is sometimes our help desk get calls and they say I can't find where I put my file or where I stored my attachment. And it's because they didn't pay attention to where they were storing it or when they went to save it. Um, so pay attention to where you're putting it. You'll always find these little home buttons that take you back to your start point. And um, uh, when you go to save, just pay attention to where you put it. The next, I'm going to start a new document here. And we'll do a new text document. And next to this pencil here is a table button. And remember I said the black drop-down arrow shows you a little extra hidden feature. So I click on that and it actually brings you up with a little grid that you can select um, cells, how many rows and columns you want. So I'm selecting a 4x4 four four grid. I'll click and now I instantly get a table. The thing next is we're talking about the interface and how it behaves. We're going to look at how the table toolbar has appeared and how useful it can be. So I'm clicking and dragging across the first row here. And I'm going to use this table toolbar and there's a merge cells button on it. I'll click on that. And it took those four cells across the top and merged it into one big cell. I'm going to center it and this is my title. Next I'm going to click in the last row and I'm going to use this table toolbar again and add a few extra rows at the bottom. Now I'm going to click and drag down a few and merge the cells again and this time I'm going to, right next to it, there's a split button and I want to split it vertically. So you can see I've done a vertical split. At first I merged and then I split. So what I'm showing you here isn't just how to do tables, but that a toolbar has appeared, just like we saw with the pictures and um, things before and those drawing objects, that a toolbar has appeared, and the toolbar is quite useful for whatever object you're using. Now, some people see the toolbars and they get annoyed and they hit the close button, and then they, they have troubles trying to um, do things with the table and they fight with it. But if you leave the toolbar open and work with it, it makes it easy to work with uh, the particular object you're working on. If I click below the table, the toolbar disappeared. If I click back in the table, the toolbar reappears. Another thing, um, we were looking at right-clicking earlier with the picture. Um, sure, this toolbar has some stuff to do with borders. We can play with the borders here. But if I were to right-click and go to Table and look at the borders, there's a very fine-grained tool to manage the borders on your table. You can choose which edges of the cells you want the borders on. You can choose the thickness. And it is very detailed through a right click gives you lots of options. Whereas if you just use the toolbar, it's kind of the most frequent used options. And they can't possibly fit all these details on there, so they hide them in a right click. Uh, you can also get to it using the toolbar. There's a table properties button that takes you straight in there. Uh, with any word processor, there's usually about three, four ways to do the same thing. Uh, I can't show you them all or show you all the features, but all I can do is show you how the interface behaves and mainly that of how the toolbars appear and disappear and um, some of the key differences between um, this and Word. The next is um, I'll just click down below and let's start up a bullet list. A new toolbar has appeared. We're going to play with that in a second. I'll create a list here. One, two, three, and four. I spelt four wrong on purpose, it's just to show you the spell check. So a right click helps you spell check. Oh, it doesn't know that four. So four. Let's try that one. Oh, see, it's guessing at what I'm trying to spell there. It's not doing a very good job. Four. Oh, finally. I had a funny R in there. It said four. But 
Apart from that, um, we've got a new toolbar here. We're just trying to reinforce how the interface behaves. So let's say I want to move number three up. I can push up, and now it's one, three, two, four in the order there. If I want to move it back down, I can push down, and it's back to the right order. Let's say I wanted an unnumbered entry. I can hit an unnumbered entry, and I get a blank spot. So this is my half. So I got one and a half. Let's say I wanted um, two and a half and I wanted it indented, I can indent it. And if I want to change it to ABC, I can change it to two, a half, and a bit more. So as you can see, this toolbar again has appeared. If I don't close it and I play around with it, it al automatically makes it really easy to work with um, these particular object or the particular task at hand. The next I want to show you is how to get help in the program. Actually, before I get help, um, if you did a mistake, you can undo. There's an undo button here. And you can redo. So um, that's quite useful when you make your mistakes. You can fix them uh, or just undo them. The next is let's go to help and open office help. This brings up a, an index that you can search for things. So let's pretend we want to do automatic page numbering in a footer. So I'm going to type footer. And it gives me six um, sub things under footer of what I can do. I double clicked on about, and it tells me what a header and footer is all about. If I already know what it's about, just look for the bold text, and you'll see what you need to click on in the program. Let's say I want to do page numbers. I can double click there. And it shows you in bold here that I'd have to insert a footer and then insert a field and page number. So the main point here is how to, to um, work with the help. You search for something, you click through the topics, and it, um, it shows you um, different things. Also, there's related topics at the bottom of the page uh, that you can work through. So I'll close this help, and I'll just show you that it's there. So it told us to go to insert a footer. And there's a portion of the page that will automatically repeat. I've pressed tab to get into the center. And I'm going to insert a field and a page number. And now I have automatic page numbering. So I'm going to just um, skip to the next page by pushing enter a bunch of times. OK, that's page one there. And if I scroll down, page two automatically is there. Now the main point, though, is not footers, it's that if I need help, help is in every program, plus every program, because it's community built, has support or online support. So this is a web link going off to the OpenOffice website. So I've clicked on it now, and now I'm on the OpenOffice website. I talked earlier at the beginning that it's free to download this program. If you need help, it says, I need help with my OpenOffice. So let's click on that. And there's lots of different types of help. Everyone likes, um, some people like uh, emailing or asking on a forum or following guides and how-tos or there's short, frequently asked questions. There's all sorts of different types of help. Um, one thing that some teachers like is the tutorials for OpenOffice Org and it's for anyone learning or teaching OpenOffice Org. And we were using the Writer program, so we'll go into Writer. And this is the table of contents. So if you're teaching primary kids with no computer experience, here's a lesson plan on uh, the keyboard, the space bar, the shift key. I'll just look at that one lesson plan. And it talks about very introduction stuff to OpenOffice. But let's say we're um, more intermediate, and we're going to go down the lessons plans. And we're doing some drawing in Writer which we did earlier in this tutorial. And here's the drawing toolbar, what you need to click to bring it up. We were using the callout and a scroll. We, we did a scroll, how to work with them, uh, the toolbar that shows up. So we kind of touched on it, but if you want to go through the lesson plan yourself, you can. You can also download the lesson plan as an open office document format and edit it for your class or for uh, a specific task at hand. So the, the lesson material is already built uh, for you. And it's people that uh, don't know how to program, they can write lessons or teach, and they, they uh, share that with the community.